So brothers and sisters, I, I would really encourage you to take part in the conversation with me and we'll just trust the Holy Spirit to show me when to stop talking and when to let us uh, have questions and go back and forward a little. And I say that because we in this society have been so brainwashed with wrong concepts of marriage that it is very important that I don't just try to brainwash you with another concept, but that we have a real opportunity to interact with each other on the whole subject so that we really are convinced of what God's plan is. I'd start off by making this statement that the basis of marriage is not love. The basis of marriage is not love. The basis of marriage is God's will. Now I think the Holy Spirit will sh show you a modification of that as we go on, but I think that's the first truth for us to receive into our hearts and I know all your happy little hearts are rebelling like mad against it. But, loved ones, the basis of marriage is not love, as we so often think of love. The basis of marriage is God's will. And that's the truth you have stated clearly in that Old Testament scripture. And it's the truth that is taught repeatedly through the Bible in regard to marriage. Abraham, when he required a son, a daughter, a wife for his son, did not tell Isaac to go out and put a telescope on the girls going to the well. And notice the one with blonde hair, or the one that walked especially attractively, or the one that looked as if uh, he could live with her satisfactorily for life. Abraham did not do that. Abraham's first concern was, what is God's choice for my son? And that is the whole basis of the story, loved ones. And it's even the basis on which uh, the in-laws agree to it. If you like to look at it, it's Genesis 24. And it's verse 50, Genesis 24 and verse 50. And Rebekah's father treats it that way. Genesis 24 and verse 50. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. Now that's the only basis for a good marriage that God wills for two people to be husband and wife. The basis for a marriage is not that you look at the girl or you look at the guy and you think, yeah, I'd love to li live with her for life because let me tell you a secret who I'm only 15 years married, but a secret that many people here who are 20, 30 years married could also tell you, you don't know what they're going to turn out like. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You're just having a notion. You may look and you may think, oh, she's going to be just wonderful. And you, you may look at him and say, oh, he's just going to be the most steady fella that you could imagine. You cannot tell what we're going to turn out like. You can't. You just cannot tell. Especially, of course, when you marry early on. But even if you marry towards 30, you still can't really tell how a person will behave under all the strains and under all, the, under, all, under all the pressures of life, and especially under all the advantages that they will begin to experience as life gets steadier and more stable. So, loved ones, it is madness to look at a guy or a girl and try to judge from your own point of view of your foresight, and you're guessing what they're going to be like. It's madness to try to judge, will they be suitable for you? The only way to start a marriage is to know that God wants this person for your wife 
And God wants this person as your husband. And that's the only basis for marriage. That's why the wedding service has those uh, words in it. I take thee to be my lawful wedded wife, to live together according to the law of God in the holy estate of matrimony. I undertake to love her, keep her, and then I plight thee my troth. There too, I plight thee my troth. And plight is the old English word, I make, and troth is the old word for covenant. And there too, I make a covenant with you. And that's the basis of the wedding. That because God has indicated that you should be husband and wife, you make a covenant that that's it. Lord, I don't care what she does. I don't care what he does. Lord God, you've indicated that we're to be man and wife. I make a covenant here in the presence of this congregation and in the presence of the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. And I make it in the name of Jesus, your only begotten son. And I call heaven to witness that I make an agreement with this woman that I stay with her till death us do part. Why? Because I think she's going to turn out right? Because I like the look of her? Because I like being with her? No, no. All those things are uncertain and none of them may obtain but because you have indicated, Lord God, that we should be husband and wife together. Now, loved ones, that's the greatest reason for being husband and wife in the world. And you dear wives who are saying, oh, would you shut up? I I want them to love me more than everybody else in the world. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. He can love you differently from everybody else in the world. He can express that love to you in a unique way because you're husband and wife. She can love, express that love to you in a unique way because you're her husband, but it can't be because you love each other more than anybody else in the world because at least the children are going to have as much love from you. But if you're in Jesus, you're going to be called upon to love many other people with the same degree of love, though you'll express it in a different way. So it can't be that, loved ones.